This week, I worked on a collection of animations to highlight why Geometry Nodes is amazing for motion graphics. Ever since Geometry Nodes was launched, my ability to make really interesting animations has pretty much tripled. Today, I wanna to show you how I do that and what I'm thinking when I'm working in that workspace. We're gonna go through a few of these animations and I'm gonna show you how I created them and all the cool nodes and tricks that really make these effective motion graphics. And we're gonna start with this animation because it really shows how you can take a simple idea and really transform it with Geometry Nodes. So first thing I want to do is get a grid node and give it some settings to have some data right here where I can place some stuff. I'm going to get this cube and instance it on my grid and then just kind of stretch it out. And this is the first piece. Now you can easily do this with two array modifiers, right? But already there is so much in front of us that we can easily change and really easily manipulate and change some settings to stretch it out, do some things that you otherwise don't have access to with an array modifier. So now that we're here, I'm actually going to join this together and treat it like it's a particle or an object and I'm going to make another grid. So we got another grid node here and we're going to plug this right into instance and then you can just scale these all scale these guys all to fit together. And again, this is something that you can do technically with an array modifier, but it is drastically easier in your computer already. And I'll mention again, geometry nodes gives me access to everything I want. So I'm gonna get a transform node and angle this to give it kind of like this stadium seating look, which is what I want for my design. And then on this original instance, geometry nodes with just some simple stuff can actually give you the ability to animate more things and give you more animation possibilities. So if I get my noise texture here to a 4D, you now can actually animate all of these objects here and you can get something really, really cool. So with some simple lighting and a, just a plain metallic material, you can get a really compelling animation that you can actually loop and make some cool stuff. And it's relatively simple by taking a grid and then gridding out that grid, displacing it a little bit with a texture and you get something very simple, very cool, very quickly. All right, now I wanna talk about this animation right here. It's my favorite from the collection and it really shows the power of using curves in geometry nodes. Now I do wanna point out that I'm assuming a lot of knowledge when it comes to these breakdown style videos that I'm making, but if you want to watch the full version, no skipping steps of this particular animation, it's completely free on Patreon right now as a free or paid member, you have access to that right now. I'm gonna link it in the description. And I also have the full uncut extended versions of these tutorials also on my Patreon. Patreon for all paid members. And you also get the original project file from each of the animations that I'm showing here. So you get the tutorials, you get the project files, all uncut, no skipping steps on my Patreon right now. You can also get 10% off if you pay annually. I'm gonna link it in the description if you wanna check it out. Now again, we're treating this like an array and we're just getting a mesh line. We're gonna transform it just so it kinda of lays down and we can instance a bunch of curves on this system. And then we can just go ahead and kind of shape it a little bit and get a bunch of these lines just like this for our scene. Then what you can do is use this system of nodes to actually get any texture you want and plug it into your curves to make an interesting structure. And you can use any texture you want, including an image texture. So if you're into logo design and making art with logos, you can plug the logo texture right in the middle of these curves and actually displace them and get them to have some interesting shape. Now we can go ahead and add some geometry to these curves. So just using these nodes right here, you can add some geometry so you can get something to actually show up in a render. And then all you have to do is play around with your texture to get it to look however you want it to look and you're ready for lighting and some materials. So I went ahead and added some really simple lighting, just did kind of three points of light coming at it at opposite directions. Then I was able to just put a simple principled metallic material in this, plug a noise texture into the emission of that principled, kind of squash it with the mapping node and you can play with the rotation to get that to look like there's kind of data or whatever going through these curves. You can animate it in a loop by animating at 360 degrees and you have something really, really cool relatively quickly and the possibilities of using curves in geometry nodes is huge. I'm actually planning on making an individual video next about just using curves in geometry nodes. This is so powerful and so fun. My cat Cindy is gonna be joining us for this one. So this one's really cool, it really shows how fun and easy it is to kind of create like a really interesting chaotic scene. Oh, she's gone. Well, now we're back. All right, we're gonna start out with my favorite shape, the Icosphere. We're gonna add a split edges node and get a scale elements node so you can actually open up these vertices. What I just did is something that you can easily do in the modifier system, but just wait. First, we're going to get a solidify 
and get a bevel node. And this is the only time we're stepping outside of geometry nodes. And it's just that geometry nodes does not have a better option for those two processes just yet. And then with a separate geometry and a random value, you can start to delete geometry. And up until now, you could only do this destructively by randomly selecting faces. Now you can do it procedurally and it has a seed value and you have a lot of flexibility in your design. Now what you can do is just treat these like they're one single object and start to duplicate them and add them to your design. Scale it in a little bit rotate it around, maybe delete a few more so we can have emphasis on the center object and then figure out how you want your design to look. So I ended up duplicating four of these objects and landed on this design here. Now what's great about this is we have the icospheres and I can recycle this idea by making a bunch of them but turn them into wireframes. So you can add another icosphere and you can bring the radius up. Then what you can do is use this displacement system to get your icosphere to have some displacement on it to make it look a little bit more interesting. And just like last time, adding that separate geometry system and then throw in these nodes right here to get our wireframe. So again, you can use these collection of nodes and treat them like one solid object. Duplicate that one, bring it out a little bit. I'm gonna make it a little bit thicker and delete some of the geometry to get more of a random look. Get another one, bring out the radius and play with the seed value on the delete geometry and maybe make that middle one a little bit thicker for some variation. So now we have a pretty chaotic looking scene of objects that the light can actually have a lot of fun with for this design. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just grab a basic material from Real Time Materials. You can go ahead and just use any metallic material or throw a noise texture onto some metallic stuff. Next is just to add some lighting to really make this scene come alive. We'll get a, kind of a red here in the middle. We'll get another one and make that one a light blue. Make it pretty bright to fill this really cool scene out. After a couple size adjustments and node edits, you can get something really, really cool with some chaotic, weird designing. And, and then all you have left to do is just rotate some of these objects, shake your camera around a little bit, and you can make something look really, really cool and very compelling relatively fast using geometry nodes. All right, this one's cool because I was able to simulate wires kind of blowing in the wind or some kind of simulation in that area, but there's no actual real simulations going here. It's just textures. So let me show you how I made it. All right, so just like the other scene where we were using curves, we're just gonna array it with this system of nodes to get a group of curves so that we can displace them just like here. All right, let's slow down really quick and let me show you what makes this scene unique to me. I'm gonna separate these guys and just make this instance right here really small. So we're gonna do the separate geometry here so that we can remove just a few of these cords. I'm gonna duplicate my instance on points, add a join geometry, and get a transform geometry so that I can move things. So plug all of these together. So on the separate geometry, you have this inverted socket. Inverted represents the places that it was removing things. So what you can do is actually take the inverted and put that into the points socket, and then put your instance, in this case, the quadratic bezier, into the instance, and things are back. But in this case, you can now bring some stuff up. And this is going to allow a more organic look once we actually start making this look like strings. What I'm gonna do now is do some randomization on this line of the separate geometry. So throwing another separate geometry on there, getting another random value. We'll duplicate this system of nodes here. Again, plugging the inverted into points and our instance into instance, plugging that into the join geometry. And then you can bring these down so now you have these three different levels of things so that the texture doesn't look super textury, if that makes any sense once we apply it to the displacement. With that being said, we can actually now displace some things. So like I've shown in the other projects, using this system, you can get some displacement going and bring up the value. If you go to your quadratic bezier, bring your resolution all the way up, and then you can start to see the noise texture creating our string. And notice those extra levels of string, making it look more like string and rather than just a texture. Bring your 3D to 4D, and that's gonna open up your ability to make this actually animate. Now we can go ahead and add some geometry to these strings, maybe make them a little bit thicker here and we can head into adding a material to these strings, which is gonna be really, really fun. 
So once you have your material selected, I'm gonna hop into the shader editor and do something really cool. So I'm looking at my strings from a top view and I'm gonna to go to the emission. So if we get these nodes into the emission of the principled, I'm gonna switch my 3D over to 2D so we can get a flat graphic and bring the random over. And then bring up your scale and you'll start to see kind of this cubic pattern. If you bring in your color ramp, you'll start to see kind of these cubes move around. And as you play with that, you can see a pattern here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring up my scale, bring down my color ramp and bring my Y and stretch it out to zero so that some wires are selected and others are not through the stretching of that texture. Then all you have to do is put a wave texture after the Voronoi and then you can animate that going around. So you can just go ahead and animate the W of the strings and you can animate the phase offset of the wave texture. And once you're done, you have a really, really cool animation that you can use for concert visuals, MoGraph backgrounds, really whatever you wanna use for this type of design. So there you go. Hopefully I've convinced you to use geometry nodes in your motion graphics. Like I mentioned earlier in the video, there is a full collection of tutorials on my Patreon for this project, totaling about 94 minutes of training. So if you want the extended version of these tutorials and get every step and all the little details of the final results you saw, check out my Patreon. That's gonna be linked in the description and you get 10% off if you subscribe annually. Uh, with that being said, I hope you learned some stuff from this. I love motion graphics. Geometry Nodes has really expanded my ability to make really cool stuff. And hopefully you got some stuff out of this. With that being said, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.